Welcome to the Heavy Spoiler Show. I'm your host, Jared, aka the Jar Jar Binks of the Heavy Spoilers universe. And we so muy, muy excited to talk all things Andor, or at least the first three episodes of this new Star Wars series that sets up, you guessed it, Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Oh, uh, you, you, you didn't? know that? Well, well, now you do. Anyway, in this video, we're going to discuss the general setup of Andor, some of the new characters here at play, what that ending means for the rest of the season, some potential theories of what could happen down the road for Mr. Andor, along with our general thoughts of these first three episodes. Are there going to be lightsabers? Do you want lightsabers? Now, if you enjoy this video, then please blaster that like button, and also don't forget to subscribe to Heavy Spoilers, because we're your only hope for spoilers in the galaxy. With that out of the way, thank you for clicking this. Now let's get into the first three episodes of Andor. Alright, so like I mentioned earlier, the character of Cassian Endar is featured as one of the main players in Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, where we see him and his crew working for the Rebellion, tasked with stealing the Death Star plans. They accomplish this goal, transmitting the plans to the Rebels, and then dies. Spoiler alert. <sighs> What? Come on, you, you, you should know that that happened. Don't, don't act surprised. So with their fate not necessarily warranting a sequel, the Andor series takes us back to the inception of the Cassian Andor character that we saw in Rogue One as this series starts in the year of BBY5. At this time, the galaxy is over Imperial control. However, we do see that the Empire has almost outsourced some of their jurisdiction to corporations. In this show's case, I guess, the planet of the Morlani system are patrolled by the pre more corporate authority agents. Essentially, they are corporate rent -a cops going through the daily motions, wanting to sweep things under the rug if it's going to cause too much of a hassle or paperwork. So, um, the show is definitely approaching the corrupted power angle in an interesting manner. Anyway, this is very much a younger, inexperienced, technical, but a bit sloppy Cassian than what we saw in Rogue One. He is that scoundrel type pulling different jobs, owing multiple people credits, hanging around scummy underworld establishments. He has an attitude of sticking it to the Empire, stealing from the rich, fat pigs that they are, because they are too arrogant to think that anyone would ever try to cross them. The framework of what he becomes in Rogue One is very much present. Now, aside Aside from Cassian, these first three episodes introduce us to a handful of other characters that may be in the play for the rest of the series, either helping Cassian, hunting him down, or potentially a combination of the two. The most influential so far being the new character of Cyril Karn. Karn appears to be this Boy Scout type deputy inspector for the corporate authority, seen to have, you know, made his own alterations to his uniform, he is organized, plays it by the book, wants to climb the ranks, but does have this kind of innocence to him. When talking with Sergeant Linus, we see him agree with taking more of an aggressive approach to patrolling these planets in the sector, very much like what we know the Empire to be in Star Wars, but he completely cowards in the face of actual fieldwork and the casualties that come with it. Bix Colleen seems to be an old friend of Cassian, potentially a love interest at some point in their lives, with her having a bit of a questionable past as well. Working at a salvage yard, she has contacts who smuggle in and out goods and also skims credits off the top, here or there. Marva Andor is the adoptive mother of Cassian. She appears to be this compassionate mother, but then again, does have a questionable past smuggling and looting of her own. In the earlier years, we see her looting a crashed Galactic Republic freighter on the planet of Kanari, where she meets a young Cassian, or rather Cassa, at that time. There is also B2EMO, or B2 for short, that is a salvage assistant ground mech. Even though it's a droid, I gotta say, it does have a quirky personality personality and does care for the Andor family quite a bit. And lastly, Luthen Rael, who turns up to be the buyer that Cassian is trying to unload the untraceable NS9 Starpath unit with. Luthen has a bit of a mystique about him. Can he be trusted? Is he an Imperial spy? So far, we aren't entirely sure, but either way, we know he has some deep pockets offering to buy the Starpath unit from Cassian, but also does see something else in him, offering Cassian a way out of his troubles, but there is something he needs from him first. 
Now, these first three episodes honestly play together like one big origin story movie, covering how a young Cassian came to be from where he is now, and the journey that I'm assuming sets him on the path to what he becomes that we saw in Rogue One. And the ending is playing out both of these stories at once. In the current timeline, the corporate authority agents are hot on the trail of Cassian as he meets with Luthen about selling the Starpath unit. Through this conversation, though, Luthen discovers Andor can be utilized for much more offering to get him off the planet if he helps with something. Now, Luthen seems a bit vague about what this is, but with us knowing Rogue One takes place roughly five years after this, something tells me that Luthen is recruiting Cassian for the beginning of what we eventually see are the Rebels. Even going back to what Sergeant Linus said, there are pockets fermenting, meaning that small groups of people are attempting to rise up against them. There's fermenting out there, sir. Pockets of fermenting. And this is even seen a couple times in episode 3, with all of the townspeople banging on the metal to distract the corpos, while Cassian's friend straight up ties salvage to one of their tack pods, causing it to crash. We're seeing the seeds of the rebellion form, and I'm positive Luthen has recruited Cassian for this cause, but whether it be a Rogue One-esque job is kind of beyond me. I could see them headed out to the outer rim, you know, somewhere where it's a bit safer. As for Luthen himself, I want to say that he's a wealthy benefactor or potentially politician in the same vein as Bail Organa, wanting to end the Imperial rule much like others. There is an inkling that he could be an Imperial spy and there's some Mission Impossible mask reveal gotcha moment, but as of now, I'd say that that is a long shot. Never tell me the odds. While the devastation witnessed by Karn is probably going to drive him down the path of aggression even more as this season plays out. His story arc is going to be this officer of the law molded into a blinded, power-hungry Imperial officer that is definitely going to be a thorn in Cassian's side as this story plays out. As for the flashback timeline, Marva is seen rescuing Cassian as a boy from the Republic ships approaching the crash site. This helps to explain how he got off of Ferrix, why the name change, why this birthplace of Kanari was such a big deal, and why Cassian has been searching for his sister this whole time. They were separated that day because she stayed back at the campsite while Cassian ended up going on the hunt. For all we know, she could have been wiped out by the Republic forces that were coming to the crash site, or she thinks that Cassian ended up dying that day. Now it's a little theater. 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 Yeah, I have to pay Paul $5 to use that sounder, so I hope it's worth it. But what a twist of fate it would be that at the end of this season, Cassian is firmly implanted on the path of becoming the rebel that we see in Rogue One, only to find out that after pulling off this Luthen job, that his sister is still alive and is a well-established Imperial officer. What a shocker that would be if that was the season one cliffhanger. Let me know in nine-ish weeks whether or not it's right, because this may be your reaction when the season finale happens. Overall, I am really digging this Andor series. It genuinely feels like an immersive, ground-level, dirty, dingy crime thriller pulling in several different characters, which I'm hoping each play into the central story, while exploring their own storylines and build out the Star Wars world much more than, hey, look at that thing, or remember that thing, or that character. This feels new and honestly brings Star Wars back to what I remember it being as a kid, especially the musical score setting the tone of everything. Sure, The Mandalorian had some great moments, but Andor is the first time that since maybe like Rogue One that I have felt like, Ooh, this, this is something special. And the fact that they used practical sets rather than the big volume screens used for The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett makes it feel that much more real. Yeah, yeah, I guess real if that makes sense. It just feels like the characters and everything are actually there, and I'm excited to see where these 12 episodes take us. Obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the first three episodes of Andor, and is this a solid return back to the Star Wars world? Anyway, we're currently running a competition, giving away three copies, yes, three, of Thor Love and Thunder on the 15th of October. And all you have to do for a chance to win this is like this video, make sure to subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below on your 
your thoughts of Andor. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month, and the winners of the last one are on screen right now. So if that's you, message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch, be sure to check out some of our other cool videos right over there, whether it be our House of Dragon breakdowns or Rick and Morty Season 6 coverage. With that out of the way, thanks for sticking through this video. I've been Jared, and Lisa, we we pleased you made it this far. I'll see you in the next one. Take care and peace.